Baptist Church, let's all stand up and let's sing that song. My name is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Sing it out. My name is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I'll rise above all doubt and strife and read my title there. Sing out. I
Amen. It's good to be here tonight. Brother Jonathan Severs, can you take us forward to prayer, please, sir? Amen. Thank you. Maybe seated. Just a couple of things to remind you of. Um, I appreciate the um, folks that came and helped and was a part of the memorial service for Floyd. Uh, it was a very good representation in our community. Lots of uh, lots of people and lots of people that used to come to church. I was surprised at how many people had been through the door um, at one time or another. Lots of them as kids um, or young people or through the life of our church. We wonder why sometimes we spend all the money we do on all the activities of teens and children's churches and all the different things that we do uh, with camps, but it's worth it. A lot of times we don't see them after that, and we can get the, get the gospel to them while they're young, and they put their faith and trust in Jesus. And uh, many don't have the backing that our kids have and uh, don't get brought up in the house of God like, like we'd like them to. And, uh, but it was just good. It was good to see several, several uh, people. Some people said, oh, you, are you the pastor here? Said, yeah. Uh, you, Kelly? You know Kelly? Uh, I'm Kelly. Yeah. It's like, oh, and who are you? Hey. And I, I co- there's guys there I coached in baseball, and they're as bald as I am. And I'm thinking, I coached you in Little League, and you're bald. And, and it's like, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's just neat. And it's, it, it does make me feel old, but that's okay. Uh, I guess we all are going that way. I know, brother. But, um, and then I, I, I wanted to remind you, it's good to have Brother White with us tonight. And he's got a special guest with him. And we're going to give service over to him a little while later. And then uh, Wednesday night is our teen service night. And you won't want to miss that. There will be a camp meeting right after service. And I've mentioned to several of you, if there's a job that you do not want, um, make sure you let me know that. We have lots of help, lots of people. Um, and um, if there's something you don't want to do, but uh, I, I'm looking for willing servants, willing to do what they're going to do for the Lord. And um, if you'll put your all into it, I'm sure we'll come out the great week. That many helpers, um, it should be a very, very relaxing good week. I'm looking forward to all that God's going to do um, with Brother Perry up on the mountain. And then, um, of course, we're raising money for the parking lot. encourage you to give as God allows you to give towards that. It's important that we get it done this year. Uh, We can't go another winter without it. We don't want to lose it because it's uh, $20,000 to start with, uh, $20,000 just to repave it. And so we don't want to spend that kind of money to repave it. it. Right now we can get it patched fixed the cracks everything done and then resealed um, and he said it'd be like triple resealed and so we, we wouldn't have to worry about it that um, it'd be very quality work but that was forty nine hundred dollars and we took in so far 32 of that no we took in we need 32 more and uh, so if uh, you could give towards that that would be a blessing um, there is a New Mexico night um, it's it'll start at 7 30 on the 4th and uh, it'll be an activity not sure totally what we're doing there but Brother Perry's group will be here um, he's got 30 folks coming from New Mexico. He'll be preaching for us all day on the 6th, and I'll be praying ahead of that. Then teen camp right around the corner, Father's Day, all the way through the month of June. Exciting to see all the things that will be happening um, here in our church. Are you glad you're here tonight? Does someone have something to praise the Lord about? Something good God's done that you can share? Yes, sir. Let's, let's get a mic so they can hear you on live stream. I need a mic. Yes, sir. It, it's not that we have to have a mic to hear you. It's the live stream. Don't pick you up. So then your wife won't be able to hear you when you're praising her. Love you, Cheryl. There you go. I helped you out there. You owe me. I just, I got up, <clears throat> I got up at nine this morning and I didn't want to get up. I really didn't. And I said, Jesus, help me up. Roll out of bed to start with. So I did. And I got dressed. Oh, and I took a shower. That's why I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to shower. <laughs> Fly in my condition, I could fall in the shower and kill myself. So I decided <laughs> that I was feeling good, so I came to church, and as I confessed the pastor, I fell asleep a couple of times towards the end because I got tired of standing up and singing. <laughs> so this morning for this night singing, thanks to Drew, he put up some pretty good songs, so I'm wide awake. <laughs> that and you had a good nap in there in my preaching. <laughs> I understand. Hello, Miss Cheryl. There you go. All right. So, someone else over here. Thank you, Kelly. 
I'm thankful that Friday my surgery went well and there wasn't anything that went wrong. It was just smooth, and I got in, got out, had my got in, get in my got my surgery and got out, and thankful that nothing bad had went wrong. Okay, except you ended up you broke both bones. Yeah. So, Casey. I'm thankful that the sun came out today. The sun came out today. Where? <laughs> Did you take a nap and dream? I'm thankful that my mom and dad had a safe drive up to get Colton's surgery and down and back. And I'm thankful that Colton's surgery went well and that we all get to come to church today. Amen. Kelly, you want to run it back to Miss Jen, please? thankful my parents got to come visit and I'm thankful that my daughter graduated high school. Amen. Congratulations Brooke. Up here Randy. Grateful I get to be here today and also grateful that I got in contact with my son. Amen. Glad you're here Randy. Someone else over here on this side lots of people Kelly you got to run bud. Um, so I Jackson and I are going to head up to Anchorage again for a few days for another swim meet that he's swimming in. Um, and so I had to make reservations to stay, and it's summer, and it's really expensive. And um, this lady that we stayed with last time, who I never met, I only texted her through Airbnb, um, I just checked in with her to see if her place was available. And she said, yes, it's available. And so I booked it. And, you know, it was pretty expensive. And... Um, she texted me back and said, you know, I'm going to give you a discount for coming back and just being local. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that's so awesome. And and so I clicked her accept um, refund or whatever button, and I didn't really look at it because I was at work. And then I looked at it the next day, and she only charged me $25 a night for three nights, which is huge discount. Um and I was like, oh, I think this was a mistake. I don't think she meant to do this. And so I texted her back and said, I, I just looked at it. You know, I don't think this was what you wanted to do. So let me know how you want to fix it. And she said, here we go. Um, she <laughs> said, um, you know, I just feel like this is going to be a blessing to you and your family. And, um, and so we're just going to leave it as it is. And so I told her I was going to tell everyone that I know about this blessing. So here you go, everybody. I'm telling you. And we all want our number, too, for $25 a night. <laughs> yes. The birthday boy. Yeah. Um, he blessed us and kept us safe on our um, whale watching tour today. And we had a good time. We saw a lot of cool animals. Huh, that's good, Wyatt. Brother Johnson. Thanks, everybody, for praying for the ship in Anchorage. Um, was on it, I believe, four or five different times. And uh, all in all, I went and spent over $7,000 for them to buy electronics and things at the store. Um, gave them a bunch of fish and cookies and all sorts of things. But in the end, uh, the captain was very receptive to talk about Jesus, and he didn't even know. He goes, I, he goes, I believe in God, but uh, I said, well, what about Jesus? And he goes, I, I, I've never even heard of him before. Mm -hmm. So in the context of Chinese communism, it was very difficult, but he has uh, several chronological books that go from uh, uh, Genesis all the way up to the cross and resurrection. So if you remember Captain Tang to pray for him and... I gave a bunch to the crew also. So thanks for your prayers, and I really think the Lord was honored and glorified there. Amen. Thanks. Yes. Sorry to call you Mimi. Okay. I'm just thankful for the man Drew has become and for Crystal and all of the, the way they're just raising my grandchildren in church and I just wish I was closer, but I know they're in God's hands, and just thankful for all of y'all that helped make him the man he is. I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, someone else? Crystal. 
um, to kind of, I'm thankful for Miss Susie too, and I was thankful for the trip that she, I'm thankful that she got to come up on this trip and that, honestly, we've gotten to spend more time together on these Anchorage trips for Colton than I've ever spent with her before, and it's just really fun and nice to get to know her more. Um, but to kind of add to Kim's um, testimony, we were also given some blessings just out of nowhere. First, um, I can't remember what day, but last week, a lady came up to me and just said, do you, um, if you come over and get this piano right now, I'll give it to you. And so I was like, okay, Drew, go get the, pi- <laughs> go get the piano. <laughs> and it, and John, I think, who was it that helped you? Chase. Oh, Chase. Chase came over and they were sweating. It was really heavy. I mean, it's, it was made in like 1901, so it's very heavy, but it is so nice. Like, I cannot even believe that it's in my house. Like, I love it so much. Um, and I didn't even pray for a piano. God just knew that I wanted a new one. And then, um, yesterday Drew just comes home and he says, I did some work for a guy and guess what he gave me. And I was like, what? He said, he gave me a camper. And I was like, I didn't pray for this either, but I have said so many times, like, I really want to buy a camper. I really want to buy a camper. And he, God just gave us both things in two weeks. And today I was talking to the girls. We were teaching about being walking in the spirit and being in his will and that you will I mean the Bible not that it's all about this but the Bible says he blesses you with good things and that's not just spiritually but also sometimes God can just bless you with the earthly things that he just knows your desires of your heart and he knew I wanted those two things really bad and I wasn't going to get them anytime soon so I'm just so thankful that he blessed us in that way and just lifted my spirits a little bit and um, I'm just thankful for his blessings on us amen also thankful Colton came through surgery well. I I was not, like, worried, but, you know, <laughs> I was a little on edge about it. No. So, um, and then when the doctor came out, she looked at me, and she was just so confident. She was like, this is the best way of, co- like, way of treatment. This is, if he's going to have a broken arm, this is the best thing because he'll heal faster. And honestly, I think it was just God's will for him anyway, so. Amen. That's good. Miss Bonnie. Your message this morning touched me. I I listened, you know. (laughs) Anyway, it was like what you're supposed to be doing, you know, listening to the Lord. And, you know, for the memorial today, I wasn't, I was like, I'm going to just go drop off some food and leave maybe. And I know the Lord has given me the ministry of uh, Alaska Native people, you know, and it was just good today to, uh, hug on some of those ladies and just invite them to church and know that that's where I was supposed to be this afternoon. Amen. Thank you for your help. Anyone else? We'll give you one more opportunity. All right. Well, I have to back up Gary. <coughs> so I'm so surprised Scott allowed me to cat nap between sermon this morning and so. Gary slept, I can't have between topics. So I thought your message was very good between topics. Right. I don't really understand what he said, but that's good. Amen. <laughs> All right, Brother Drew. Thank you. All right, for Brother Gary, let's stand for our last five congregationals. <laughs> <laughs> let's stand for our last one. Complete indeed. Thank you. 
time my family is going to come sing. We have a guest singing with us tonight. My mother has asked to sing with my family. So this should be a good time. And right after that, Brother White, you got the show. to say one quick thing as Pastor White's making his way up. I'm thankful. This morning we were talking about listening to wise counsel and seeking the counsel of your elders. Well, I specifically talk about four men in my life that are all here tonight. That's one cool thing that, but first of all, my pastor, you know, he's, he's taught me how to deal with people. He'll tell you he's not a people person. Well, I'm just the opposite. I need people in my life. Well, he's taught me how to deal with every single kind of situation that you can possibly get yourself into. Wise counsel. And then I moved along to Brother Scott. And <laughs> he's the guy that I go to when I need some humility. Listen, I'm telling you, one time I preached a message and I thought, man, that was good. And he came up to me after he said, can I give you some advice? <laughs> Listen, I'm thankful for men like that. And then I moved over to Pastor Schrock. He's my prayer warrior. He says, don't waste my prayers. I could be sending them somewhere else. And he said that in a moment of his life that really and truly he could have, he shouldn't have been thinking about me. And then I went on to Brother Werner, and you know what he's taught me? That no matter what I'm doing, you never need to be too busy for the ministry. I've never, ever asked him to do anything where he didn't say, when do you need it? Five minutes later, it's on my front porch. Simple as that. So I just wanted to say that I'm thankful for the men in my life who have allowed me to become who I have became. Thank you, Brother Drew. And the um, few years that I've known him, I've seen him grow in the Lord. Brother, Brother Drew, good, good man. God bless. I really enjoyed that trip yeah. with he and Crystal and Carl. Well, all the, way, all the way to Glen Allen and back. That's what we used to call Killer Run back in the day. That's, that's, a, that's a long trip. 
But that was good. That was good. Johnson was up there. Right. Okay, wonderful. I've got Buford here. And some of the young people, they've been helping me with Buford. I'm going to get them to help me tonight. You guys want to, uh, Brother Drew, you think you could get a group up here and spread them out? We're going to help them, uh, have them help Buford sing uh, Wise Man and Foolish Man. They know that song, right? You guys know that song? Come on. Wise Man Build This House Upon the Rock. You guys know that song. Surely they do. That's one thing I can count on with Resurrection Bay Baptist Church. They keep these old songs going from generation to generation to generation. You know, you can go into churches today and they got no idea about what it means to sing I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart or wise man, foolish man. You know, these songs that we grew up on as kids and we want our kids to sing them. We want our grandkids to sing them. We want their kids to sing them and keep singing them because these are the songs that brag on the Lord, not man. Too, too many man-centered stuff nowadays. You know what I'm saying, right? Okay, well, I'm going to get Buford out. Come on, Buford. Uh, hang on, I'll be right there. He's holding the inside of the bag or something. He won't come out. What's the matter with you? I'm too tired. You're too, too tired. You're not too tired. You're not going to fall asleep like Rollins, are you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, I will tell you this, and I'm going to come defense these guys who fall asleep during the sermon. I can be listening to the best preacher in the world, and if I'm tired, I'm sleeping. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've watched him sleep through a whole sermon before. A whole sermon? Surely not. Well, you look like you're sleeping anyway. <laughs> Maybe. You guys want to sing Wise Man, Foolish Man before I get me and Buford in trouble? Okay, here you go. We start with the wise man. He built his house on the what? The rock. The rock. Okay, let's sing. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood firm. God. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand went flat. Hey, you know the last one, don't you? So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just sing it. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. The, the blessings, blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, young people. I think they did a wonderful job for an impromptu. That's what we call impromptu, you know. Um, you just never know when somebody's going to call on you to sing, preach a sermon, right. eat roadkill. <laughs> no, nobody's going to just call on you to eat roadkill. If it's stinking up your road, you might. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, man. if it's, I don't even want to go there, Beeford. Okay, so build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way to build your life on the rock. It's time for Buford to leave 
And no, you're not going to the Roadkill Cafe after church tonight. Oh, man, that stinks. You're right, it stinks, all right. That's his favorite place to go. Okay. We're going to take our Bibles and turn to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We're going to begin in verse 21. I'm going to put on my old man reading glasses. I, I can see other than that. I'm... It's a, a, I'm amazed I had these horrible cataracts on my eye. I finally got to have surgery on, on this one, and that was horrible in my right eye. Then I finally got it on my left eye. So I, I can see what you look like. Okay. But John chapter 4. I don't know if anybody's ever had cataracts and cataract surgery, but, boy, that's some amazing stuff. You know, really it is amazing the technology we have today and what the Lord's provided. Okay, in John chapter 4, I think most of us, if not all of us, realize that this is where Jesus stops to talk to the woman at the well. Remember, he was tired and thirsty, and he sat on the well there, and he asked the lady for a drink of water. And, but his whole goal was to give her the message about himself being the living water. Remember that? Okay the living water, which is Jesus Christ himself. But as we progress down through here, I want you to follow along with me, and I'm going to read from verses 21 to 26. As I read, please just follow along. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak un unto thee am he. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the living water. I thank you for Jesus Christ, our uh, living word, as you've given us the written word and the testimony here, dear Lord, of this uh, woman who had such a broken life and a troubled life. And yet you stopped that day to speak to her, to tell her of the living water, and she believed and was saved. And Lord, if there's anybody here tonight without Christ, we pray that they will see uh, that you love them, that you care for them, no matter how broken their life is, no matter how troubled their life is, you're seeking them to be uh, your child and one of your worshipers. And help us, dear Father, to serve you faithfully till Jesus comes. In Jesus' name, amen. First question that I'm going to pose tonight is, what does God seek? As a matter of fact, Jesus says very specifically here uh, in verse 23, I'm going to call your attention to that verse. But the hour cometh, and now is. That's what he's telling. The hour comes, and he says, this right now. Here's what the Father is seeking. Uh, and then now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. Look at this next uh, line. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is seeking for worshipers to worship Him in spirit and truth. There's a lot of stuff these days that passes off as worship that's not really worship. Uh, yeah. Good. Now, I will tell you this. I love the singing that glorifies God. You know, I've already mentioned a little bit about that earlier 
that there's too much man-centered stuff where it's all about man, right. patting man on the back. But it should never be about that. It should be about praising God and praising Jesus Christ. I, one thing I know when I come here, the song is going to uplift the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to sing about the blood. We're going to sing about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're going to sing praises to the Lord. Now, that's not the only way to worship God. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look through the Bible, uh, there's a lot of different instances where people worshiped God, and it wasn't necessarily through song. As a matter of fact, if you truly look at the meaning of worship, it's, it's where we're going to show proper reverence and adoration to God, even falling upon your face. I believe it was this morning when Brother uh, Ken was reading where it says, and they bowed their heads and worshiped. You know, they didn't bow their heads and sing a song, but they bowed their heads in, in awe and in honor and respect of a true, holy, and righteous God. But God is here today still seeking worshipers that worship Him in spirit and in truth because it's all about God. It's all about Christ. It's all about what He's done. One thing I really love, like I live out in the country, so I can easily go out at night, and we don't have the light pollution, so I can see the stars. And when I look at the heavens, I'm reminded of Psalm 19 where the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day out of speech, and night unto night show up knowledge. When I look at what God has created, I can worship Him as Creator. When I look at how horrible and wicked and vile I've been in my life, I got saved when I was 13, but that don't mean I've been a saint since I got saved. I, there's too many things in my life I wish I um, had never done or never said or never thought. And uh, I won't go into any details, but uh, you, you can imagine the worst thing possible, and I'd probably agree with you. Okay, but anyway, so, but you know what? I can worship God as my Savior because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. So I can worship Him as the Creator. I can worship Him as Savior. I can worship Him because He, he is my Father. He is the one that leads me and guides me. You know, the Spirit of God teaches us. And you know how the Spirit of God teaches us? You know, in, in Titus chapter 2, the Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men and teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. So the Spirit of God wants to teach us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We are called to righteousness and truth. And as a matter of fact, that brings me to a verse over in the book of Psalms. There's three places in the Bible that you will find this phrase. Two of them are in Psalms. One of them is in First or Second Chronicles. I can't come up with that right now in my head, but you can look it up. So in Psalm 96, if you'll turn over there, Psalm 96 And verse 9, the Bible says here, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, fear before Him all the earth. And so, when we seek God to and trust in God to help us to live a holy life, we can worship Him in the beauty of holiness. You know, there's so many people that don't really care about the life or lifestyle they live. You know, they, they, they want to have Jesus and have the world too. And you just really can't have it both ways. To worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. But is it my holiness? No. Even Jesus told his followers, he said, except your righteousness 
exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall have no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. What kind of righteousness did they have? Just an outward show. Anybody put on an outward show, but what's inward in the heart? That comes from God. The holiness that we have is God's holiness. The righteousness of Christ, as the Bible tells from Romans chapter 3, which is by faith unto all and upon all them that believe. So when we trust Christ, we have His righteousness. We have His holiness. We have the Spirit of God that can help us to live a holy life. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It goes on to say, For we are His workmanship. His workmanship, something that He did. For we are His workmanship, created under, in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we walk in a life of holiness. It's by the grace of God. It's through His power. I don't have the power to do it. As a matter of fact, um, my flesh gives me a lot of trouble. And um, so when, when I'm running into trouble, it's me. Truthfully, um, the Bible says only by pride cometh contention. And there have been too many times in my life that I should have prayed and asked God to help me to have the right answer. Because the Bible does say a soft answer turns away wrath. Sure. It's not been that long ago somebody challenged me, and it would have been so easy for me just to, just to blurt out, you know, and... And, but when you start an argument like that, it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do me any good. It doesn't do them any good. And so I just asked the Lord for help. And then they came back and apologized to me later. And you know what? That never would have happened if I had followed my own selfish pride. And I can say too many times I've followed my own selfish pride, right? But we can worship God in the beauty of holiness before a lost and dying world, and even before other believers, by saying, by asking God and His Spirit to help us to worship in spirit and truth. That worship is not just in the house of God, but it needs to be on our job. It needs to be in our home. For some reason, that's the hardest place, it seems like, in, in our home. And shame on us, shame on me, shame on believers when, when it's just, it's because we just let our guard down. And that's the people we should say, God, help me to truly worship you in spirit and truth, in my home, at work, before the lost world, in the house of God. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And it goes on to say here, look at this, verse 9, fear before him all the earth. You know, there's going to come a time when Christ comes back and there's going to come a time, as the Bible says, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. All the earth. And that's going to happen. Right now, we live in a very evil time, in very wicked time. We, we are so close to losing a lot of valuable freedoms in the United States of America. But you know what we do? And I say we because I'm guilty too. We point our fingers at those lost people and we shake our fingers at them. You wicked, dirty, rotten sinner. You know what we should do as Christians? We should get on our knees and we should get on our face before God and cry out like Nehemiah did and confess our sins and the sins of our people and ask God to spare this country and ask God to overturn this evil that we're seeing rise up so quickly. It's just like an avalanche, isn't it? I know we all know what an avalanche is. We live in Alaska, we know that. They just come tum when they start, they come down fast. And we're seeing this snowball right now in our country. And I'm telling you, I'm just asking you. I, I'm, I'm not asking you to do anything that I don't want to do myself. I'm asking you, please help me, pray for me. And I'll pray for you that we will humble ourselves each day and say, God, what can I do today to glorify you? 
What can I do today to reach the lost world? What can I do today that will be different in front of my family, in front of my friends, in front of my coworkers, in front of the lost and dying world? Um, one, I heard a preacher years ago say, sinners are going to sin because that's their job description, right? The lost world's going to sin because that's what they do. We're the ones that have the light of Jesus Christ. We're the ones that need to say, God, help us to be the light and the salt in this world. All right, we're going to move on here. So, what does God seek? Well, we see that the Father is seeking true worshipers, and He's seeking such to worship Him even now. I love this because it's like a continual thing. The way Jesus said it, it wasn't like, oh, He was, but now He's not. But this is a continual thing. He is continually seeking true worshipers. All right? And uh, this morning in Children's Church, I got to go down there. Brother Brandon let me come down at Buford, and we talked a little bit about Zacchaeus. So we're going to look at that right now, Luke 19. And I'm not going to belabor any points about that because I want to move on. But in Luke chapter uh, 19, we are going to look. Remember Zacchaeus was, um, he wanted to see Christ. So he climbed up in the sycamore tree. An interesting thing, think about that God had to plant that tree ahead of time and it had to grow and had to be there. It was preparing the way for Zacchaeus. It gave him something to climb into because he wanted to see Jesus. He had desire to see Jesus. He had desire to know who this man was. He was a tax collector. But after Jesus spoke to him and after Zacchaeus stood and said, Lord, I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything by anybody by false accusation, if I've stolen from them, in other words, I'm going to give him four times of what I took by cheating the man. And then this is what Jesus said down in verse, we'll look, we'll look at verses 9 and 10. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. Why did he say that? Because that kid was a changed man. Zacchaeus believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus was not the same man as he was when he climbed in the tree as after he climbed out of that tree. God brought a change in his heart, in his mind, in his life. He says, for as much as he also is son of Abraham. So look at what the Son of Man seeks. God is seeking. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. God is still seeking the lost. And because we're the children of God, we need to actively seek the lost. We need to be conscious of people every day that we run into that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, maybe, you'll, you, maybe you have time to uh, give them a, a full witness. Maybe you have time to give them a gospel tract. Maybe you have time just to plant a seed in their heart and mind. But just be sensitive to what God wants you to do in reaching uh, the lost. Now, this is all great because God is seeking these things. But you know what? If, if you don't focus on what God is seeking, you can fall prey to what Satan is seeking. And we're going to go over there and look at that right now in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Young people, I don't want you to fall prey to... Satan and his tactics. There, he, he's out there and he is actively seeking to uh, destroy you. Okay, so in 1 Peter chapter 5, we're going to begin in verse 6, and I'm going to read down through verse um, 10. Okay, all right, listen carefully. Verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Okay, remember earlier I said only by pride cometh contention? The opposite of pride is humility. This is what we need to do to avoid uh, Satan from devouring us. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that, may, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him for He careth for you. 
So no matter what problem you're going through in life, whether it's something with school or relationships or family, no matter what it is, you can take that care and you can cast it upon God and you can trust Him to help you. Now verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. In other words, you need to be watchful. You need to watch out because Satan is actively after you right now. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Do not think you're an exception to that. Satan is seeking to, seeking to devour you. He will devour your testimony before the lost world if you're not careful, if we don't humble ourselves before God. And we need to learn that... Um, God will always help us if we allow Him. Back up to verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. See, it's easy for Satan to devour you when you walk in your pride because pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall, right? So if we don't humble ourselves before God, then we are going to be the bait for Satan to devour us. Be sober, be vigilant, that because your adversary the devil is roaring lion, walked about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So we go through these trials, and it helps us to be, it says, perfect, that's complete in the Lord. It's going to establish us, strengthen us, settle us. Those trials and tribulations we go through are for a purpose. But I want to call your attention back to verse 9 where it says um, speaking about resisting the devil steadfast in faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that in the world. You know what's easy to do? I'm the only one that's ever had this problem. Nobody else is going through this. You know, that's a lie of the devil. Because the devil knows that all of the brethren he knows the Bible too. Remember, he quoted it to Jesus. He tried to get Jesus to bow down and worship him. And Jesus said, uh, told him, get thee hence, for thou shalt worship the Lord God, and him only shalt thou serve, right? So the devil wants to destroy you. He will work on your mind to make you think that nobody else has ever had this problem. And yet they have. And yet there's brethren in the world going through it. Uh, this brother that talked about getting a witness into China, you talk about trouble. There are Chinese Christians. There are people in China that are Christians. And I'm telling you, every day their life is on the line. And um, I tell people, I know we're not really supposed to compare ourselves, but still when I look at people like the Apostle Paul and John the Baptist had his head cut off now. I view myself as a spiritual wimp. I'm thinking, you know, Lord, these men, they really suffered for the cause of Christ. Paul was beaten. He was shipwrecked. There were so many things he went through. And you know what God told him when he asked to have that thorn in the flesh removed? He said, my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And you know what? I, I, I quote that a lot. But it's after I get out of bed and I'm, I'm sore because I can't sleep anymore because my hip's hurting or my shoulder's hurting or the other side's hurting. You know how it is. You get older, you get all in makes and pains. And uh, it's just the way it is. But God is there for us while Satan's trying to devour you. Look at what happened with, with Peter. Go over to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. You'll recall this. Christ knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. And Christ knew that he was going to come back to 
Peter there, uh, and you can look that over in the book of John. But I want you to look at this in Luke chapter 22. We're going to begin in verse 31. Um, because just like Satan is, is seeking to devour you, he was seeking to devour Simon, which is Peter. That's who Christ was talking to here. Verse 31, Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Christ knew that, that Satan wanted to bring Simon Peter down. Now, I'm just going to give this to you quickly, and you can say this on your own. Study the life of Simon Peter before the resurrection, and study the life of Simon Peter after the resurrection, and you'll see there was a changed man. Now, did he still have problems? Of course he did. Uh, and you'll see that. But you know what? He was always just, before that, he was always just loud and proud, wasn't he? It was all about Peter. Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll go and die with you or whatever. You know, it's just like, I'm going to be right there. But then he denied, and then he ran. Why? Because Peter was depending on Peter. Peter changed. He was saved. Because you can find that in the book of Matthew. They was a saved man. Because uh, even when Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So he was a saved man. But he was a changed man after Pentecost. And look what Christ told him right here. It's Satan's desire to have you to sift you as we. But I have prayed for thee. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And look at this. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. He didn't mean when you're saved, so when you're converted. When it quits being about Peter and it starts being about me, I want you to go strengthen the brethren. That's what we need to do. That's what I need to do. I need to be more like John the Baptist that, would, that said, he must increase and I must decrease. But we make it about us instead of about him, and it's too easy for us to fall prey to Satan to be devoured. All right, let's move on. So we see what God seeks, true worshipers, to worship him in spirit and truth. We see what Satan is seeking. Remember, if you don't seek what God wants you to seek, you'll fall prey to Satan. So what should we seek? Well, quickly turn to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. Matthew chapter 6. Now, you know this uh, passage. You're familiar with it. Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> beginning verse 31. The Bible says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we, we be clothed? See, we, we get caught up in the temporal. You know, we've got to have jobs, got to work, got to provide, I get all that. But we get caught up in that. Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. See, God knows your needs, but this is what we're supposed to seek. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We heard that tonight. Kim's wonderful testimony, Crystal's wonderful testimony. And I know you guys know who Jonathan Fisher is, don't you, right? He's a good guy, man. Uh, our church in uh, Arkansas took him on, and um, he came down and told us this story about a boat. You know, you can pray for a boat all you want to, but I'm going to tell you, you're not going to get that boat, but if you need it for God, God's going to drop a boat in your lap. I love that story. You guys remember it? And a company, God told him just to call them. He called them, and they said, yeah, we want to give you the boat because we're looking to put it in ministry, and God gave him a boat. Isn't that amazing? So if you need it, God's going to take care of you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let me tell you something else about this story. Um, a lot of us know D.J. Harvey. Remember D.J.? You know that D.J. Press prayed for years for somebody to go into Huna? And, and I asked Jonathan, because he told me that a few years ago that's the place he was going to look into. He said, 
He said, I'm doing a Bible study now with someone in Hunan. So, you know, our prayers mean something, folks. And we just need to keep praying that God is going to send forth laborers into his harvest and keep supporting them. And uh, do you guys support Brother Jonathan? Okay, good. He's a good man. All right, so all these things added unto you. Take, therefore, no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought for the thing of itself. Sufficient today is the evil thereof. So we know that God, uh, we seek God and his righteousness. He'll provide. But we get caught up into the day-to-day. We get caught up in our own little world. We get caught up in these things. And God, over and over and over, shows himself strong. Turn to uh, Matthew 7 and verse 7. Matthew 7, 7. A couple more passages here. We'll bring this to a close. But seeking God. We're talking about seeking God. Uh, verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. You know, asking just takes asking. But seeking and knocking, that's some action. That's something where we got to get out and actively seek and actively knock, right? But goes on to say here, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? You know, if you've got a kid that's hungry, you're not going to give him a stone to eat. You're going to give him something good. Or if you ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? I've always told people, I don't think I'd ever want to eat snakes. Some people do. I think I'll stick with the fish. Just just give me the uh, the salmon or the halibut, and I'll move on. Verse 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? So when we seek what God wants us to seek, He's going to take care of us. He, he promises. See, this is what you call an argument from the lesser to the greater. Am I greater than God? Of course I'm not. I'm nothing but just a lowly human. And yet, I would take care of my kids and my grandkids. But God's much, much greater. And he's going to do much, much more. So don't doubt. Just go to God believing and trusting God. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to just do a few verses here in Colossians chapter 3, but I'm going to challenge you to study out this chapter in the Bible. Go back, because if you really will seek God like you're supposed to, there's some things in our life that we're really going to have to deal with. Okay, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians 3, 1. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ... Okay, who's risen with Christ? That's the believers, right? That's us. So if ye then be risen with Christ, what are we supposed to do? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. In other words, we're going to, we need to seek the eternal... And it says here, set your affection on things above. Wow. Um, That means there's a lot of things that I have my affection on in this world. I need to reconsider, don't I? Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. Do I look dead? No. You know, to become alive in Christ, I had to die. Uh, The Bible is so filled with paradoxes. If you'll study certain words in the Bible based on what they actually mean, it it helps us understand this stuff. Like, a lot of times we'll say justified means justified never sinned. Do you know it's greater than that? Do you know that the word justified really means that God declares you righteous? It's a declaration that you are now righteous when you were not righteous. And if you'll study the word dead or death in the Bible, it literally means separation. It'll help you understand a lot of these passages that can get confusing about 
I was dead, now alive. You know, because I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God that loved me and gave himself for me. I was dead in my sins and trespasses. I became alive in Christ, but now I'm dead to sin and self, or should be, right? Okay, so all those things, if, if you see the biblical way of approaching it, it just means so much more. So for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So verse 5 tells us to mortify, therefore, your members which upon the earth. And it goes on with the list. Mortify, put it to death. Because the, the old man is dead, right? And the new man created in Christ Jesus is there. We need to mortify some stuff. We need to look at these things in our own life and put them to death. And then it goes down to verse 8 and says, But now ye also put off all these. Now there's some other things we've got to put off. Anger. Don't tell me you never get angry. If you don't, please tell me how you do that. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. All these things are part of the flesh, but that's really dead in Christ because we're alive in the Lord, right? So we put off all these. Now let's see what we put on. Verse 10, we've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And verse 12 says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. I'm going to get into one real tough one here, and I'm going to close. Forbearing one another. You know what that means? Putting up with one another. You might know the weaknesses of everybody in your family. You might know the weaknesses of some of your Christian family. You might know the weaknesses of people you work with. Guess what? We're told just to put up with them. Forbearing one another, and look at this one, forgiving one another. I believe that forgiveness is one of the toughest things that we as Christians face because we just need to learn to forgive each other. We need to learn to, you know what? Sure, you've been hurt, and I've been hurt, but we've also hurt people. And um, Paul talked about this in one passage where he says, uh, he says, you're taking your, your own Christian brother to court. He said, why aren't you just taking the wrong? Apostle Paul took the wrong, didn't he, a lot. He let people beat up on him, so to speak. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Wow. Say, I, I can't do this stuff, preacher. No, you can't. And neither can I. But the Spirit of God that resides in us, we decide we're going to take the old man off the throne and let the Spirit of God control us that's how we can do this in Colossians chapter 3. This is a tall order. Go back and study Colossians chapter 3, and you'll see that to be dead to self takes turning everything over to the Lord for all of us. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Father, I pray that you will help me to seek what you seek, which is to truly worship you in spirit and truth and to seek you and your will and your way in my heart and my life. Help me, dear Lord, to pray for my Christian brothers and sisters. Help me to pray for the lost. Help me, dear Lord, to humble myself before you to allow you to, to use me in a way, Lord, that you want to. I pray that you'll bless my dear brother Kelly here in this work of ministry in church. Help them, Lord, as they faithfully serve you at Resurrection Bay Baptist Church. Give them of your grace, strength, wisdom. Raise up uh, young people here to go out and serve the Lord wherever you call them, dear Father. Uh, help us to realize that we must humble ourselves to resist Satan and that you will fight that battle for us. And I want to thank you and praise you for it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Kelly, God bless you, my friend.
I'll come back and get him later. Tonight, the closing invitation. My life, Lord, is yours to control. If God spoke tonight, the altar is open. Go to God there in your seat as we sing. With my whole heart, I humbly seek you. Now use my life, O oh Lord, I pray. I yield my sovereign will completely. May your commandments light my way. tonight. Um, he mentioned Jonathan Fisher. Jonathan Fisher's daddy, Doug Fisher. Um, wonderful preacher, wonderful man of God. Um, had some surgery. Anyway, to make a long story short, he has had some strokes and um, he has a bleeder and they've been working on it. They were able to get him to come to uh, the local hospital. They were able to get him back closer to home. But I just want you to pray for his family, pray for him. One of the most intelligent men that I know. Uh, one of the most godly men. I sure would hate to see him go. We don't need to lose guys like him. But God knows. And uh, you'll pray for my friend, Doug Fisher. I was thinking today, it was just a few months ago that he was texting and you know, he constantly, uh, just words of encouragement, but more than anything, he was known as a man of prayer and uh, just a humble, I mean, large church, large man of God. But if you'll pray for him, pray for his dear wife, his kids, his boys, many of them are in ministry, and uh, to watch their dad go through what he's going through now. The frustration of the pain and all the things that he's that God would just either perform a miracle or perform the miracle and take him home. Then tonight, also, if you'd be praying this week, um, our friend Brother Perry is having our friend Brother Souter. And uh, we've got a mutual friend that's going to be there. And I, I don't want to give his name, but I want you to pray. Just, just call him Pastor's friend. If you'll pay, pray for my friend, uh, I, I just want the touch of God to be on Brother Souter this week. Um, that he can touch this man's life and then reach into the church there, Brother Perry's church. And uh, it's exciting to see all God's doing. Uh, Brother Perry's taken uh, 
he's, he's a very, his gift is, he's a teacher, he's a student, he can, he's taken the whole of No Hope and he's put it in a student format, man, we're excited about that and all he's doing, and, but uh, if you'll just pray for the meeting there this week, and then ahead of our church camps, uh, I believe the hand of God is going to move like we haven't seen, um, and I'm excited about what's going to take place, but listen, the devil is going to fight up to that point. And if you'll just put it before God every day, anytime you see the number nine, um, you say, why nine? Well, nine is the number of fruit. Good. I'm glad I'm teaching so much. The number of fruit. And uh, you'll find that nine times, uh, abide in Christ. And you'll find the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long term, there's nine. And uh, you take the number of fruit, numerology. and you. So anytime it's nine o'clock, ask God to do what only God could do. In church camps every time you see a nine i don't care if it's 59 49 but when you see the number nine just stop and whisper a prayer to god for a few minutes will you do that i pray you will pray for our friends if you would we love you you are dismissed